Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom. With Jay Wise, I'm your host, Cody Ward. Thank you for spending some of your time with us tonight. And as a reminder to all our listeners, besides being on all your favorite podcast platforms, A Drink of Wisdom is also on YouTube with each show segment available. Head on over and like what you hear. We would appreciate your subscription. What's going on, Jay? Just you and me again. Uh, Drink is in the middle of a move and he's had some snags, so he's out again tonight. But he is rejoining us shortly. I promised you last week. He'll be back soon, I promise. Yes, yes, yes. Drink, we anticipate. Um, the one and only Drink will be back with us Friday. Um, and I really hope I'm in a better mood then than I am now uh, based on the first story that we're going to get into. It's, mm-hmm. it, it is, it is not, um, it's just not, it's not good. But we'll get into it. And in the, But in the meantime, you know, it's the beard, it's the wisdom. Let's go. Let's get right into it, man. In episode 85, the Bucks get beat again. Kuzma beats the buzzer. And we have a unique angle on the NBA awards. But of course, we begin tonight in the world of college football with some pretty big news. The Big Ten and Pac-12 conferences have postponed fall sport activities, including football, and are looking towards the spring for a new target. These decisions were made final today by the conferences after a weekend of turmoil and rumors about the possibility thereof. These conferences joined some group of five conferences and high-profile players in opting out to play amid the pandemic. Meanwhile, the SEC and ACC have stood firm in their plans to play, while some teams from the canceled conferences have also been vocal about playing, such as Ohio State and Nebraska. For now, it appears that we have a very strange college football season, if any, on our hands. So, Jay, did the Big Ten and Pac-12 make the right call here? Should we have a season? We should should absolutely have a season. I'm looking at – this is the developments that we've seen today because it was it was today that the Big Ten and the Pac-12 came out and said that they're postponing. They're going to look towards the spring. Think about when we go back to Rudy Gobert testing positive. Think about the NCAA, the uh, conference men's basketball tournaments that got shut down shortly thereafter. Everything was like a domino effect. One one conference made a call. Hey, we're shutting it down. And then very shortly after that, they all dropped like dominoes Mm -hmm. all together. A lot of that, and you brought up a good point earlier, a lot of that had to do with some of the players weren't comfortable. Some of the programs, some of the high profile coaches, you talk about Duke, you talk about Kansas. They were among the blue blood programs that said, yeah, we don't, we're not feeling comfortable right now. And now some of that has gone in a little bit of reverse as it seems And not only that, we just got news very shortly ago, the ACC and SEC, their plans are unchanged. They, they expect to play. That was real quick. That was reiterated after the PAC 12 and big 10 news. So that wasn't just, we haven't gotten word yet. They actually have adamantly like reaffirmed their commitment to play. Yes. They, they, they expect they are, they are moving forward with their plans to play. Matter of fact, you had an ACC medical expert uh, from Duke. I believe his name's Cameron Wolf, who is a big is a big reason why the ACC is moving forward. Uh, Dr. Cameron Wolf, yep, yeah, Duke infectious disease specialist, um, says that doctors have learned enough over the past six months to manage the risk, and he believes that the season can take place safely. Um, now, what he did say. And, you know, communicating with the ACC uh, commissioner, John Swaffer, he said, look, there is risk here. It's, we cannot cut the risk all the way down to zero. But we believe the risk there, it's an acceptable level of risk. And this can be done safely. And it absolutely can, can be done safely. We, we take a look and we have the great thing about football, professional football and in the collegiate ranks. They are the last, really the last, um, cog to fall into place among the major sports think about the the nba was hit immediately they're, they're back the nba's back in a bubble they're, it's going well we have we haven't seen any positive tests baseball they didn't go with a bubble they've had some snags they've had a couple outbreaks but what we've seen the marlins and the cardinals as far as i can tell and Derek jeter the marlins you know president whatever whatever role he holds pretty pretty uh, high profile role he came out and said hey our guys they weren't taking it seriously they were being lackadaisical they weren't mitigating properly and the cardinals they were i believe there was some sort of big party or something that they engaged in 
so we can see reasoning behind these outbreaks. If you don't mitigate, the risk increases. You got to mitigate. Um, but even but even with that, think about this: all the other twenty eight teams really haven't had much of an issue. Now there have been positive tests here and there, but there's been no outbreaks. So it can be done. Think about that: twenty eight out of thirty teams, ninety three percent have done have done pretty well so far. Now we still have a we still have a, a long way to go. Um, but it, to me, it can be done. If the, and if those guys can do it, and you think about college football, how much time they have had, and I talked about the NFL last week, these leagues have had time to gather information, make good decisions, put good mechanisms in place, get your testing protocols together. I don't see any reason why, you, why it can't be done. Um, I said this earlier. I think there's some political undertones here. Um, I would, at the administration level, I would say, I don't know this, but that's what I feel. And I, that's what I believe. And, but coaches and players, I think for the most part, and not everyone, because we've seen, you know, social justice initiatives. We know that has dominated headlines um, after the, uh, after the coronavirus, that's been the next big thing that's going on. And there, we've got some things, particularly in the PAC 12, you know, there was a big, petition thing put together where you know we got these demands or we ain't playing all these all these different type of stuff but we, we should have a season we should have a season and really the purest in me really thinks if the big 10 and the pac-12 said hey we want to wait to the we want to wait until the spring to play the pure the football purist in me says well the rest of the conference the west of the power five because that's really all that that's what really matters here the rest of the Power Five should back over and say, we'll follow suit, we will play in the spring. Because that is really the only way you have a, legit, a really legitimate season that, that won't have an asterisk and you'll have a true national champion. Because you look at what we're about to embark upon right now, we talked about them, Ohio State, perennial national championship contender, and you think about other fringe teams in the Big Ten that we see in the top 25 consistently. You think about Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, yep. and then the Pac-12, I'll be honest with you. I could care less about the Pac-12 because we know they're not serious. Um, but, I mean, we, we, can't, we can't completely dismiss a team like Oregon. Um, they appear to be back on the come up. Um, so these are big losses as far as um, what we're looking for in terms of a playoff. You know, we talk about those college football playoff rankings. Think about how weird it's going to be to have a playoff ranking show and we're not going to be discussing where Ohio State falls, you know, in the mix of things. That, that just seems ridiculous. And, and then there, that's a whole other issue. Where does the college football – do we still have a playoff with these three – with just three uh, Power Five conferences? Is, is that something the playoff will, like, entertain? A lot of unanswered questions. Um, and then another thing, and you, I think you're going to touch on this, and I hope you do, um, there are teams within the Big Ten particularly that want to play. You talk about Nebraska, they want to play. Uh, I believe Nebraska and Iowa were the only two teams in the Big Ten to vote and say, no, we want to play. We do not want to sit out. But Ohio State, I think they want to uh, get their hands on this action as well. And why wouldn't they? I mean, this is, this is a big deal. And um, I know it's, this is just, it's just a game. It really is. But this is, this is important to a lot of people. And we talked, we talked about this all the way up um, the entire period of the coronavirus pandemic. Sports unite, sports is something that unites us. It's something that we lean on in tough times. Think about, go back all the way to September 11th, 19 years ago. We, there was there was a brief pause in the action, but it, it didn't take very long at all to where the NFL was right back at it. I mean, it just comes down to there's always going to be some level of risk in everything, including this. And I guess the I guess the thing some people are waiting on is I guess the decision has been made for some folks that we have to have a vaccine before we'll get back to business. And I don't know, I guess, I guess they're just hoping first of the year we'll have one and then maybe it'll be an acceptable point where we can play, but there's no guarantees that that'll happen. So this is, this is, I'm disappointed. And I think it's pretty obvious that I'm disappointed. I think they, sh I think these folks should, um, they, they should have, they should have made a better effort. 
Um, not to say that no effort was made, but we should be able to ha- we should be able to have a season. And I think they're doing. I think these school these conferences have done a disservice to their student athletes. I really do. Oh, I'm. I, this is really unfortunate. I mean, absolutely. College college football is my favorite sport. And it's my favorite time of the year. You know, like when when college football is coming on, like the the year is, is changing. You're getting to the end of the year. You know, I live in Florida. Hurricane season's starting to wrap up. You know, I know those slightly more bearable temperatures are on their way you know you wake up with college game day got this cbs uh abc or C- sec on <laughs> cbs <laughs> music yeah <laughs> you know I'm a, I'm a florida state fan and i love that man so that yep. that that's my favorite time of the year you know and this what what appears to be the first of a chain reaction of cancellations now that that news from the sec and the acc was a little surprising to hear how they reaffirmed what they said so yep maybe we have something different on our hands. You know, I think what's really interesting is you, you talked about the, the tournament going back to where we had the, the NCAA tournament and how some conferences quickly shut things down and packed up their tents and some made extra efforts to play. But what it really came down to was the players and the coaches said no while the conferences were trying to say yes. Remember the ACC was pretty yep. infamous. They were like, they were like about ready to put people at gunpoint to get out there and play. And then when Duke packed it up and the rest of those other teams started doing it, they said, okay, well, no one's going to show up. I guess we're going to, we're going to cancel this. And it was at the big East, like had a game and they canceled it at halftime. I mean, it was yeah, the big, yeah. The big East was the last one to fold up mm-hmm. and rightfully so. Cause they ain't playing no football. So, <laughs> so right. We're basketball. So a big deal to the conference and they, they try everything they could, but see this time your power structures flipped a little bit. You have conferences saying no, like the big 10 and the PAC 12 namely, but then teams within the conference, like especially Nebraska has been really, they're really mad about this, but also some of your blue bloods like Ohio state, like Michigan, I, I know John Harbaugh said a lot about playing and even conferences that don't have it canceled yet. Like Alabama, Nick Saban's had comments about it. So the, the dynamic has shifted a little bit away from the conferences and more to the teams, coaches and players. Uh, Trevor Lawrence this week started the whole, uh, we want to play initiative where they're, it's, kind of like players are trying to unionize a little bit, but it was marked by Justin Fields and some other really big name, you know, top picks that are going to come up in next year's draft and some of the biggest voices of the sport right now. So it it, it creates this interesting dynamic because can Ohio state really say, no, we're going to play and go to another conference. Are they even allowed to do that? Like, can they make up their own schedules? Can we have some weird, like power three for the year where we just break you up into geographical divisions and you just play whoever's close to you. Like, like part of me thinks that's so cool. What if Florida state and Florida and LSU were all in the same division and we all played each other. And then, and then we played the champion from the, the Midwest and you know, like that's, that sounds so cool. But at the same time you have to think, yeah, but we're missing two conferences. How good is this going to be? I mean, I don't know. Like I said, you take Oregon and Michigan and, uh, Ohio State and put them in. We're not really missing too many other teams that are yeah. going to be contenders, but hey. Um, but you know, we we look at when you zoom out a little bit, you look at the whole thing. One of the big problems is there's really no good answer to this, right? That there's no true answer. You can't reaffirm 100% that it's so dangerous no one can play. Nor can you reaffirm that it's so safe that there's no risk of catching it. Like you said, the risk cannot be zero. But if you think about it, that's true for life in general and in a sport right. like football where there's a lot of right. injuries and a lot of potential Absolutely. for serious injuries. Absolutely. Every year, players have careers ended in football. It, it happens. It is an inherently dangerous sport. Now, it's not to say that coronavirus doesn't present its own risk and its own issues, but you're already playing a dangerous sport. We're not playing tiddlywinks out here. So I don't understand. Like, <laughs> is Exactly, because when you talk about it from a societal standpoint – are we just going to be SpongeBob in the, in the episode where he sits in his house with the penny and the napkin and he doesn't leave his house for any reason? Like, you know, how, how far do you take it? Because we're seeing some aspects of society, not just in sports, where we're seeing increase in suicides and people avoiding hospitals for treatment. And, and the virus is having these second and third order effects that are starting to potentially outweigh the dangers of the virus itself. As we see more people recovering, less people having symptoms, less people having serious complications from it. You know, we have to ask this is the same thing true for football. Is, is canceling the, sp- the season really the best call for the athletes? Because we know a lot of these guys, uh, and this was highlighted by guys like Trevor Lawrence and Nick Saber, they both mentioned the fact that, hey, some of these players may go home and not have great situations. You know, one, they weren't planning on being home in the fall. 
they're planning on being on campus. So they don't have any, they may not have arrangements made for housing and employment and money and everything else. And I mean, for some guys, it can be so bad. It's not having food on the table. You know, you, you may be going to high transmission areas where like Dick Saban said, Hey, you got a one or 2% chance of catching it here. You may have five or eight or 10% going home, especially living in a big city, you live in a hot spot. So we can at least control some aspects here. So why wouldn't we want to try to do that for these athletes and keep them a little bit better uh, secure than they would be at home, just running all around on their own. Um, but, you know, on the flip side of the coin, we also have to remember that COVID doesn't just isn't always just, a, oh, I got a cough and now I feel better. There, there have been examples of players with long term effects. Uh, Houston's uh, Cendric Williams, uh, he's battling heart problems right now uh, in relation to COVID and the complications weeks thereafter. So, you know, when, when you're a conference, you're making all these decisions. You have to weigh everything together. But I, I think right now these conferences are really wanting to err on the side of caution. But I wonder if maybe it's too much. Uh, in the caution department. So we're going to see. This is going to be really, really interesting to see if the ACC and the SEC are going to dig in and they're going to really fight this battle. And if they do, what kind of season could we have? I mean, it's going to be – I think by Friday we'll know more. I think for sure if they've dug in by the end of the week, maybe we're having a season. We'll see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Also be interesting to see where the Big 12 falls in this. I know you got some some inclinations that they may – I'm going to align themselves with the ACC That's what and I the feel SEC like. yeah. and play. Um, and not to say I – th- I think it is a big deal if we get three playing and two not playing as opposed to the other way around. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is this is strange, man. This is strange. And it's it, it, it's not going to be the same without some of those big high-profile programs that the Big Ten in particular um, puts out there because the Big Ten is the second-best conference. Mm-hmm. in college football so not having those programs available and it's right that like then that's why i said a lot of unanswered questions here because yeah can the can the how much uh how much control does the big 10 have over the individual institutions can some of these teams that want to play just pick up and roll out and you know the big tw- the other conferences like hey yeah we'll take you in you know we'll take this school in to make it somewhat equitable there's a lot of things we don't know, and I, I would imagine we'll be revisiting this very soon. Oh, definitely. And the final thing I also added is the ramifications of scholarships, how this affects eligibility, money, not only with the programs, but a lot of these cities around college campuses take, again, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, for example, they make most of their money off Nebraska home games. So there's going to be a lot of pushback, not just from the teams, but from a lot of sources outside of college football that depend on this for their livelihood. It's got to get really interesting, so we'll see.